until you cross them and they don't yeah. want to sell or they go out of business and or then nothing. Then what happens when they go bankrupt or they don't pay you? You have no fallback, you know, and we don't want our fallback to, hey, now I've got to go start taking some divorce cases or, hey, he's got to go start bartending. You know, we want to be in control of our business. So, Because for whatever reason, I never depended fully on a gallery. I just always knew if you have all that faith in one person and that person goes away, that's not good. You know, to have things spread out where you know you have legs that are gonna fall, or not on one leg you're gonna go. But here's the thing, we're not talking about galleries and saying there's some good, some bad. Yes. And there's some good, some bad businesses and everything. Just because somebody's a doctor doesn't mean they're gonna do a good job with you. But the sad situation for me in the world of art for galleries that are not good, what a gallery is doing is taking away from the profession that's the hardest to figure out and they're taking from that person that is barely even able to do it because they're graduating, afraid to even be able to sell their paintings because normally they can't. So they're deciding they're not going to. Here comes a big old fat gallery with the contract slot across the table. The artist in their mind has won once they sign the contract and they're represented in New York because they already know they're not going to make any money. And they're gonna have to do something else for a profession because they already taught that. So they've already been told that. Now that they're representing New York, all they have to do is go and represent New York, and they're successful. And they never evolve. They never get to new things. They never go find another gallery to get into. So the hard thing for me is that about taking from artists. And number two, what other business is there that you manufacture the product, and then you have the place that sells it, and the place sells it on consignment? Any other business you open, you buy the merchandise and you stock the shelves and you sell the product and you make your money back. And you know what happens when the product doesn't sell and you've had this shirt for $30 for six months, you reduce it 20%, and then if it doesn't sell, you reduce it 40%, and the store sells it. It doesn't reduce the value of the manufacturer because the store is selling it. But it's the artist always being the owner of the, the art. If an artist is selling them at $5,000 and they start selling at $3,000, they just destroy their whole market. You go buy a Rolex watch, new, used, whatever, you know what it's gonna cost because they built a market for it. You're not gonna find a Rolex for $200 anywhere. And so that's what's important about the artists is build their market, but then they never get to sell the product. They work so hard for a whole show, 20 paintings, beautiful, nothing sells. The gallery's not out of any investment, so they have no really push to sell their inventory because they have no money tied up into it. But when you own a business and you have $150,000 in inventory, you're gonna sell that inventory. Um, okay. Um,
So we're never pressure. It's never, and if somebody ever decides they don't want it, it's never like any weird feeling like, oh, God, you can't believe you don't want a piece of that. You know? Because then people don't want to be around that kind of feeling eventually. They might give in that one time, but they're, they're going to disappear. No, we, we honor the, we feel like we've already won because they're a member. We've already, you've already helped us pay for our trip. So it truly is a bonus if they then buy the one of the paintings. I, I will say since the institution of this club, we always, John does 11 pieces in his um, F, F international series. There's 10 members of the group. We always keep one of those pieces because I never want to let go all of those pieces. I want to keep just one. Um, but our, our sales rate to the FCC is probably always at least 60, sometimes 70 or 80 percent. We'll get placed through previews to the FCC. This is our fifth year. The first year we did it, we had no dog, we had no catalog, we had no documentary for them to watch. They come in the front door and we're like, look at the art. They look at the art and they leave. They weren't interested. So we got better every year. When you would have the book and then we had to read it. Then we have, they watch the documentary like this where it's about the, the country we went to. And then we get to show them those. So there's all these cool ways where we 